Well, hello everyone, I am Sacred. A heartily welcome to you all and thank you a lot for joining me in Hearts of Iron 4. Well, this episode is called a fail series for a reason, because I attempted to play as the Austro-Hungarian Empire, excuse me, I think it was called um, United States of Great Austria here, in this mod. But that didn't go that well, and here uh, I played I think in total for one, to, to close to one hour in this mod. And here you can see now, well, how I failed. This mod by the way is called uh, in the workshop Österreichischer Phoenix, which means Austrian Ph Phoenix. Austrian Phoenix, yeah, it's a new mod from the mod developer of uh, Kazakh, yeah, so if you want to check it out. The link is down below in the description. Also, please uh, to support me, please subscribe my social media. Currently, it's just Twitter. Also, please, if you want to help out, just drop a comment below, give a like, and be sure to subscribe. I would feel really, really honored if you would do so. Thank you. Well, my first dinner plan here was I thought, all right, we are the Austrian Grand Empire first. Well, we are not aligned. So I'm not able, I'm uh, I'm unaligned, yeah. So I'm not able to declare wars to other countries. Well, that's a huge problem, I thought. Uh, so we have to change our ideology. And well, I know the hearts of our info community. I I'm not sure if my viewers are mainly pro-fascist. I mean, in the game, of course, it's only a game. You should sure forget it. But I think uh, most of you would appreciate it if I. Go fascist here. I'm not sure if, if my viewers are more fascist or more communist in the game, of course. I hope that you all view Hearts of Iron for just as a game and don't get offended if someone plays as communist or uh, democratic or fascist for that reason. So, firstly, my plan now is to, well, attack Yugoslavia. Uh, Yugoslavia at that point, because of the mod scenario, doesn't exist, so it's called, I think, Greater Serbia. Yeah. So in this mod, basically, what happens? What happened is that uh, Austria-Hungary still exists. It just lo lost the province of uh, Krakow. Other than that, the country still exists, and yes, has quite a strong industry, even stronger than the German one at that point, I think. The history has a really, the history is really in depth, so really thoroughly made. And here you see, I was wondering because Serbia just capitulated after I captured Belgrade, so there. National unity must have been indeed really, really long. But let's run out, and now you see my plans are just to build for now civilian factories. Because you know, if you want to expand in the uh, well er early stages of, of the game, I only build civilian factories. And after that, I build military ones. Military ones. So, well, here you can see uh, the conquest of Bulgaria was quite easy as well. Now I'm drawing up a highly advanced battle of against Romania. Uh, well, they are being guaranteed by no one, so I'm quite lucky in that purpose. I think the Romanians, they should not be able to withstand the might of the Austrian Imperial Army, how we are called. We already became fascists, as we can see. We are still at the call of first. And yes, you see the declaration of war against the Romanians. And the Romanians are history, and all of their provinces were annexed. That's just great. So they lost the early province of their heads, and I'm still building some more civilian factories. Well, what were my plans now? Now I thought, all right. So what's here? What do we have? Albania got occupied by Italy, so that's gone. I think yeah, I already joined the Axis. So at this point, I was checking if the Soviet Union already began the Great Purge, and they did, but to be honest, that didn't help me at all. <laughs> that didn't help me at all, you may see why. Oh, I just see that I could have declared war on Turkey. Oh, here, by the way, in that news, the, the, it uh, was called urgent news, the Hungarian nationalists were going to start an uprising, but I suppressed it with a spending 300 political power, that's why I have minus 150 political power right now as well. Uh, I think if you don't do the event, then the Hungarians, well, then they will rise up and crush you. For instance. 
Alright, so, hmm, Bond. I thought, should I attack Bond? Uh, well, at one point, uh, my army on its own, I don't want to deplete it so much because I want to use my main bulk against the Soviet Union, the Soviet army. I thought, yeah, let's attack Poland, but let's attack Poland with the help of the Axis. So we'll uh, get Italy and the German Empire on our side. I am already in, in the faction, so I just have to uh, justify my Poland. After I got the justification of war, I can go in and reclaim Krakow, which was historically a part of Austria-Hungary, and then also some other nice provinces. Also, uh, how do you like the policy of having... Oh, alright, now mind, here we go, the declaration of war against Poland, and we are fighting them having air spammers. My tanks are just rushing through, Warsaw is already captured, so that went quite quick. There is now, this time, there shall be now miracle on the Wistula, how the event in Hasselauer for all was sad when they saw it in the Poland before the treaty. There we go, now I'm taking some provinces. Germany can take a bit as well, but I took every province but two. So Germany took Poznan and Danzig while I took the rest. So now I captured what I could. But well, actually, I was thinking at this point, well, I joined the Axis. And most likely Germany signs the or is going to sign the Molotov and the Top Pact. So I thought, well, most likely the Soviet Union will get my Eastern Frontiers in Poland. And guess what they will. So one advice for you, if you play this mod or if you play any country and if you conquer Poland, then most likely you will lose it to the Soviet Union if you are in a faction of Germany. Now you see, I was in the Axis and I lost uh, six provinces to the Soviet Union. Well, there were, I think I just lost four or five factories, but still. It's something, and the worst thing is that it's a non core state, so it just serves as a buffer zone, as a buffer area between the Soviet capital, between the Soviets' main victory points, and between uh, your border. So, if you want to have a quick war, if you want to dominate the Soviet Union, if you want to get their vital industry on your side, then don't do the mistake I did. Stay out of the axis. You don't need them to conquer Poland, that's for sure. Well, uh, now I was preparing for the war against the Soviet Union. I had uh, two main army groups, so you see, one army is 40, but the is the other five. Well, I have to try and we have to train so much troops, shall we? So I thought, yeah, let's go ahead and train some more units. Uh, if you realize already, I am going completely, thoroughly through my militarization of factories. <laughs> so, military and military factories. Well, you can see, you can see as well that my country, well, I may have a lot of provinces, but the problem is that I simply lack the slots to build, to build factories. Yeah, that may be a problem, it is a problem actually right now, but since I am going to attack the Soviet Union anytime soon. Soon, well, I just realized. All right, damn it. because the Soviet Union is actually uh, under a non-aggression pact, has signed a non-aggression pact with the German Reich. Reich. Yeah, I had to leave the Axis, but I can just leave it and rejoin it. And you all know, Germany, mighty Germany, never fires against the Benelux or never fires to conquer France. At least when I uh, saw Germany, I rarely, really rarely saw them fail. This time Germany will fight so bad against the Allies that it will mess up my game. You shall sure see that to end, how horribly it will mess up my game. But well, enough said, now I'm getting a lot of technology done. You can see that Germany is already invading the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and France. So, at this point, actually I thought, alright, Germany is going to take them out really, really easily. I thought that, that that really the case, but <laughs> you will see. Also, yep, like, Germany is not fighting enough countries. Actually, at that point, the Soviet Union declared war on me. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, okay, they will, I spoil at you, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I spoil at you, I mean, you see already that they are justifying war against me. 
they are, and you see they attacked us. They broke the Molotov and Rimtop Pact, how we can see. Actually, I uh, was defending really, really well. And then, but I think if I just kept defending my frontiers against the Soviet Union, I could have depleted their army. Especially if I uh, took the German area as well. But uh, to a surprise, I decided to attack already into the Soviet Union. And because of the eastern lands they got, it's a non cost that they can just use it as a buffer zone for their vital victory points, especially Stalingrad, Leningrad, and Moskva. Moskva! Nasha Strom. Alright, then, uh, well, just the urge to say something from Russia. Alright, yeah, you see, Germany is not really doing utterly bad against the Allies. Uh, my progress, my initial progress was quite good, but I think now you see that most of the bubbles became red, and red means that we are not having success in that theater. Now I thought, oh shit, oh damn it, all is red, so I'm doing, uh, I'm just depleting my manpower and my equipment by attacking the Soviet Union, oh damn it, so I thought, alright, let's stop the attack. And let's just pause, regain some equipment and some strength. Well, at that point, I thought that Germany just... Do you see? Do you see these Italian troops there? They're just standing in the middle of my country and doing nothing. Damn Italians at least go and man the front line. And they're just staying in the middle of my country. There you see them. There you see them. They're just lined up like doing nothing. I mean... And, by the way, the Italians are getting completely invaded, completely, yeah, crushed by the United Kingdom. Italy was controlling Greece, but you see, Greece uh, got completely lost to the UK. Completely lost. At that point, I'm wondering, the British army is really weak at that point. It has to be. It's an early game. But still, the Italians, they even can't manage to handle the invading naval British army. Come on. Really, I mean, yeah, the British are also completely invading the Italians there down below in Sicily, you know, in Naples, I think, in southern Italy. They are being crushed. So things are not looking good for me. And you see, the Soviet Union started a major offensive, but I am holding the lines well. But the Germans are uh, losing the lines in a really <laughs> fast manner, that you can see. At this point, I thought, alright, I may establish to cut off the Soviet troops here, that's why I established the Spirit. And uh, something really, really interesting will happen right now. It's really, really interesting. You see, I nearly managed to cut it off. Oh, I was quite sure, alright, I completely encircled many Soviet troops, but there you see, there's one province. There's one tiny province up there that I didn't take. I tried to take it, I tried to take it, there you see, but then I got crushed back. So the AI, I don't really know what happened to the AI, but the AI, I think they know where the hotspots are and they then they send their troops really fast to fill that gap. That is something even players don't know, but yeah. I see there's just one tiny province across the ice where the whole Soviet army can retreat back to the Soviet Union from Lithuania. That's a huge problem. There you see, just that tiny province there. I tried to attack through all sides, but the Soviets kept pushing and countering me back with all of their strength. So the encirclement of, I think, half of the Soviet army suddenly failed at that point, and I was really, really frustrated at that point. Just take a look to Germany. Did I mention you how to look at Germany? That Germany is just being completely... Uh, I don't want to say anything wrong. So completely being crushed crushed and France just turned communist, I just realized, yeah, so, a true uh, historical game and at that point I thought, alright, goddammit, I won't be able to save it, so let's make some white piece, because Germany failed me and Italy as well, so, I got the mod, white piece mod, I thought, yes, I can use it, maybe it will work, but then the peace negotiations were unsuc unsuccessful with the Soviet Union, they denied it, and at that point, I... I'm just doomed because it will be a trench warfare and I would just lose the war and so I yeah, decided to stop playing here. There you see the failed attempt to conquer the Soviet Union as the Austrian Empire or half of the world. Well, at that point, uh, thank you all for watching me. 
don't forget to like and subscribe and to follow me on my social media and drop a comment below and be sure to check out my other content in that aspect i thank you all for watching me don't forget to like and subscribe i'm sacred and i'm out have a good day to you all and see you next time goodbye and have a nice day